Hello, hello, hola, hola, it's hola nature. Hola amigos, welcome to a fun bonus episode of the Hola Nature podcast. In episode three, we're learning all about calabazas or pumpkins. And it made me think of one of my Spanish courses that I have. It's called Cuentos Conmigo. It is a story-based Spanish learning course for young children. And in that course, I write original bilingual and Spanish stories. And I wanted to share one of them with you. The story that I'm going to read to you all today is called Casas de Calabaza, and it is in English and Spanish, but stay tuned. I'm going to post another bonus episode where my friend Emily in Venezuela will read it to you all in Spanish as well. So if you're learning Spanish at home, you can start out by listening to this bonus episode, and then once you feel like you understand the story a little bit, challenge yourself and see if you can listen to the full Spanish story and still keep track of what's going on. Now, these stories are all about three of my favorite characters, Mateo, Marisol, their brother and sister, and their frisky little pup named Churro, who's always chasing squirrels and getting into trouble. So without further ado, here is Casas de Calabaza. Vamos al huerto, Mama called out to Mateo and Marisol, who were currently pretending their couch was a pirate ship, and their dog, Churro, was trying to steal their treasure. They jumped up immediately. This was the day they had been waiting for. Months ago, in June, they planted pumpkin seeds in their garden. They spent the whole verano tending to their plants and taking care of the little calabazas. It was time to see if their hard work all summer had paid off. Allá vamos, Mateo called out to Mamá as he raced to the back door where his garden boots were. Wait for me, Marisol shouted, pulling on one sock at a time as she hopped after him. They put on their botas, called for Churro to come afuera with them, and raced towards the garden. Papá was ahead of them, pushing a big wheelbarrow. What's the carretilla for, papi? Marisol asked. Papa smiled. Have you seen how big some of these calabazas are? There's no way we could carry them all back to the house. Marisol looked up happily at Mateo. These would be the best calabazas they had ever grown. They would definitely win this year. Every autumn, Mateo, Marisol, and their neighborhood friends had a contest to see who could create the biggest and best pumpkin houses. They would throw a big party outside to show off all their hard work. Everyone's family would come to vote, and the best Casa de Calabaza would win a prize, a big batch of Mrs. Martinez's pumpkin muffins. They were the best pastelitos around, and she always made them with fresh calabaza from her garden with lots of chocolate chips. Marisol and Mateo had tried for the last three years, but they still hadn't won. Last year, their friend Oliver made a big pumpkin clock tower that had a real working clock in it. He was definitely their biggest competition this year. There was one rule, though. You had to grow the calabaza in your own huerto. No one could use store-bought pumpkins. All summer, the kids shared tips and tricks with each other for growing the best calabazas, from how to plant the semillas to how to keep aphids and squash bugs away from their plantas. They called it the Calabaza Club, and only kids were allowed to join. The family made it to the garden, and the kids ran over to their huerto de calabazas, a special corner just for their pumpkins. Wow! Marisol exclaimed, Mira que grande son! She was right. They were really big. They had planted a mixture of orange giant pumpkins and three different heirloom pumpkin pumpkins that were green, blue, and white. Mateo went over to pick up the biggest of the giant calabazas anaranjadas and barely lifted it off the ground. This must weigh 60 pounds, he called out to his papi, laughing. The whole familia worked together to pick up the giant calabaza, which really did almost weigh 60 pounds, and they carefully loaded it into the carretilla to wheel back home. Marisol and Mateo spent time looking at the smaller calabazas in El Huerto and found some beautiful calabazas verdes, azules, y blancas to use for their carving creation. In total, they ended up bringing home cinco calabazas to use. The rest they would let grow and slowly harvest over the next few weeks to eat and give to friends and family. This cosecha was a success. 
Marisol y Papá wheeled the calabazas back to the house while Churro bounded after them, eager to roll them around like a ball and pounce on them. No son pelotas, amigo, Marisol gently scolded him. You can't play with these. Meanwhile, Mamá y Mateo walked around the woods gathering other materials for their decoration. They would need sticks, acorns, rocks, pine cones, and lots of leaves to create their perfect casa de calabaza. Once everyone was back home together, los hermanos set out their materials and got to work. First, they cut the tops off, setting them aside to use the tallos later, and they scooped out all the semillas. They would roast the semillas to have as a perfect party snack to share with their friends. Fiestas always need good food. Mateo and Marisol got out paper and pens to sketch out their design. They didn't just want to carve a house this year. They wanted to create an amazing pumpkin pyramid. They learned all about the Pyramide Chichen Itza in the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico when they visited their abuelos during the summer. They wanted to make this to remember that special trip. Los niños worked for hours, carving and creating their pirámide de calabaza, and finally, right before dinner, it was finished. Mamá y papá came out to admire their hard work. They had stacked cuatro calabazas, from biggest to smallest, using the giant calabaza anaranjada as the base. This was one impressive pyramid. The hermanos hollowed out each one, and on every level, they created a special living area with different furniture, windows, and little homemade animals living inside. On the outside, they carved 365 steps, just like the real piramide has. Wow! Mama cried out. This is the best piramide de calabaza I have ever seen. Papa brought out some small battery-operated candles and set them inside. Las velas lit up the calabazas beautifully, and the whole family sat back to admire their creation. The next day, it was time to get ready for the big fiesta. This year, the party would be at their house, on the back deck, and the whole familia spent the afternoon decorating and cooking. Finally, their amigos started to arrive, wheeling giant calabaza creations in tow. All of the calabazas talladas were set in a row so the judging could begin. Each person had a special ticket to write the number of their favorite calabaza on it. Marisol y Mateo were numero nueve. Slowly, family members and friends walked past the amazing artwork, mesmerized by the incredible carvings. They were delicate fairy houses, tall, towering pumpkin sculptures, and their friend Oliver even made a boat with his pumpkin. Marisol had to admit, their pirámide de calabaza was mesmerizing and definitely stood out. She hoped they would ganar the first prize this year. Soon all the votes were in. Mamá counted all the botas and smiled as she called out, Número nueve gana! Mateo looked at Marisol in shock as she started jumping up and down. They won! Mrs. Martinez walked proudly toward the hermanos with her pastelitos de calabaza in hand and smiled as she handed them the big plate of treats. Marisol and Mateo had already talked about what would happen if they won, and they smiled big, proud sonrisas as they called out, Dig in, everyone! Pastelitos para todos! I hope you loved this sweet little story about Mateo, Marisol, Churro, and of course their amazing parents who make it seem so fun and special growing their own calabazas. If you loved this story and you want more like it, definitely check out my Spanish course for families. It is called Cuentos Conmigo. It is perfect for young kids learning Spanish and it is also great for families that already speak Spanish. It's full of original stories, recipes, crafts, and it's a great introduction to nature study and Spanish for young children. I hope you enjoyed this mini bonus episode. Definitely check out the other one if you're wanting to hear this story all in Spanish. And I cannot wait until next time when we get to say hola to nature.